Good evening, everybody. I'm Richard Huxtable from the University of Bristol. And in this brief session, I'll be recapping the sessions and speakers you've heard from, offering a brief reflection on palliative care and reminding you about an issue regarding the professional registration of doctors. But first, a quick reflection on your role and the evidence you've heard using two metaphors. So we recognise that you've heard a great deal across the different sessions, and it might even look like you've encountered a mountain of evidence. And indeed, some of the speakers might themselves have used a snowy mountain metaphor when describing the possible slippery slopes that might emerge if assisted dying is to be allowed. But on the other hand, you've also heard from speakers who deny there's any evidence of such a slope from those countries that have allowed the practice. Indeed, you've heard lots of strong arguments on both sides. So if I switch metaphors, you might have felt you were witnessing a tennis match where the ball is traveling back and forth across the court, not yet sure where it will or should land. And of course, that's your role to work out where you think the ball should travel. And I mention all this here to recognize that there are strong arguments on both sides and you've heard a great deal of information from many people with expertise about our experience of the topic. So let's briefly recap who you've heard from. So in the first session, you focused on what is assisted dying, received some background information about the phenomenon, including definitions, language, and the Jersey context. And you heard from Hugo Forrester, who spoke to mental health and well-being for you as participants in the jury. And you heard from your advisors, Alex and Suzanne, who offered some assisted dying scenarios and a picture of UK law. Then Ruth from the Government of Jersey focused more specifically on the law in Jersey. Then in session two, you move to eligibility criteria for assisted dying. So processes, safeguards and authorization. And on that occasion, your speakers included Isra from the University of York, who looked at assisted dying legal criteria. Professor Rob George, a palliative care doctor, who gave a critical overview of medical eligibility criteria. And you heard from Professor Raphael Cohen Almagor from the University of Hull, who gave an overview of safeguards, authorizations, and processes. Then in session three, you looked to lessons from elsewhere, particularly North America and specifically from Canada and Oregon. So Jocelyn and Trudeau offered perspectives from Canada and indeed both were speaking at a time when further changes were being proposed to Canadian law on this topic. You also heard from Nancy, who came to us from the United States, who offered some insights into Oregon. And you additionally heard from Robert, who also gave a perspective on Oregon, albeit with some more critical reflections. Moving then to session four, you looked to Europe and in particular, and specifically to Belgium, the Netherlands and Switzerland and Germany, with Siegfried speaking to the Belgian experience and Emily, another of the advisors to the jury, speaking to the Netherlands, Switzerland and Germany. Then on to session five, which was split into two parts, the first of which looked to different perspectives, specifically religious and faith-based organisations. So David, who comes from a Catholic research centre, actually spoke to a range of religious and faith-based perspectives on assisted dying. Reverend Drew Waller from the Jersey Evangelical Alliance spoke from that perspective. And Robert Ince spoke from the perspective as president for the International Association for Religious Freedom. Then the second part of session five involved looking to campaigning groups and you heard from Humanist UK from Andrew, you heard from Dignity in Dying from Dr Jackie Davis, you heard also from End of Life Choices Jersey and broadly those three speakers spoke in favour of some form of assisted dying being allowed but you also heard from Gordon who came from the organisation Care Not Killing which is opposed to the practice. Session six then moved to offer perspectives from individuals, loved ones and their carers. And you heard from Alan, 
who was seeking an assisted death or access to this, who, as of course you'll be aware, sadly has since died. We're very grateful to Alan for providing his evidence. We're also grateful, of course, to Paul, who is also campaigning for a change in the law to allow access to an assisted death. Additionally, in that session, you heard from Tani, who spoke about her concerns regarding those with disabilities if the law were to change. And you heard also from Anne, who emphasised the importance of access to good palliative care. Moving then to session seven, you heard perspectives from health and care professionals. So you heard from Rose, the chief nurse of Jersey, and Patrick, the medical director for Jersey. You heard from Carol, a palliative care consultant who has concerns about assisted dying. You heard from John, a retired GP and Freedom Church pastor who's opposed to changing the law. But you heard also from Nigel, a GP who's in favour of a change in the law. And from Sam, a retired professor of palliative medicine who feels that palliative care and assisted dying can, in theory, coexist. Speaking of which, the matter of palliative care has been discussed by many of the speakers you've heard from, and some speakers, of course, consider palliative care and assisted dying to be mutually exclusive, or at least they think that access to good, well-funded palliative care removes the need for assisted dying. But you've also heard from those who argue that good palliative care and assisted dying can and should coexist, and that individuals can benefit from access to both. The question you've been asked as a jury relates specifically to whether or not assisted dying should be introduced in Jersey. Consideration of the provision of palliative care in Jersey is a separate matter beyond the scope of this jury. However, it may be a matter you choose to note in your recommendations for further consideration by the government of Jersey. And then finally, a reminder of the letter supplied helpfully by Alex and Suzanne on the 29th of April about the question of the professional registration of doctors. And their letter was informed by discussions with the government of Jersey, who had spoken with the General Medical Council, which regulates doctors. And the key messages in that letter follow, but it is well worth rereading it. So in terms of the key messages, it's not necessarily the case that a Jersey registered doctor who assisted in the death of a patient would be considered unfit to practice, provided that is, that assisted dying was legal in Jersey. The GMC is willing to discuss this further if Jersey opts to allow assisted dying in some form. And if that is the case, the government of Jersey will also have discussions with other key registration bodies for nurses, the Nursing and Midwifery Council, and for pharmacists. Thanks very much for